Okay. Question five. Now it looks like there's a lot of information here because uh, it does say this question continues over the next page. And what we've got is a balance sheet here for Tiger Time again. And we've got a statement of profit and loss or an income statement also from Tiger Time again. And we've got some additional information. Now at the very bottom it says prepare the operating section of the cash flow statement for the year ended 30th of June 2019. So let's do that. Now first things I'm going to try and work out is we only want to look at the operating section. So let's go through and make sure that we've got, uh, we know where the operating section is. Now my accounts received, my inventory and my prepaid insurance are all part of that because those three items all fall under operating. Uh, my land and buildings, my accumulated depreciated plant equipment, all those items will be investing. Uh, my current liabilities, let's have a look. My accounts payable, accrued expenses, interest payable, income tax payable, or final dividend. The dividend will be uh, financing, but the first four will all be operating. My borrowings will be financing. Uh, my equity, uh, that all comes under financing. Uh, let's have a look at my income statement. My sales revenue will be operating, again on the sale of land, again on the sale of equipment. Both of those will be uh, investing, yep. Uh, cost of sales, hang on, let me just highlight that one. Cost of sales will be operating. My depreciation will be non-cash. Uh, insurance expense will be operating. Uh, interest expense will be operating. Other expenses will be that. Amortisation will be uh, non-cash. So I'll put an operating in there. Operating in there. And what else we got? We've got income tax expense. That'll be operating. And what have we got in our additional information? We've got land with a cost of 50,000 sold during the year. That's uh, investing land with a cost of, okay, that's another investing. Equipment with an original cost of 100,000 was sold. There was cash acquisitions of land and buildings. So those first four will all be investing. Our share dividend of 100,000 was paid, so that's financing and 70,000 was transferred to general reserves, that's a non-cash. And this one is financing. How come that is non-cash? Because it's just a transfer. There's no, it doesn't go through the bank account. So we're really only looking for those transactions that affect the bank account. And if we transfer from general reserves to retained earnings, it's just really coming from, from this account to this account here. Okay. So there's no cash elements in it. So that's why we'll exclude it. All right, now all those accounts that I've highlighted, we now want to try and find what the cash movement that went through it is. So, um, so my first one I'm going to do is my accounts receivable. And my opening balance is 600. And my closing balance is 5.72. Now what increases my accounts receivable is my sales. So my sales are, now I'm only doing this to the thousands of dollars, uh, 5.040 and that's my sales and now I'm going to try and find my missing figure which is the cash collected. So I've got six, uh, five, six, four, zero. And we got five, zero, six, eight is my missing figure and that's my cash. Cash collected from customers, five, zero, six, eight. So I can tick off, whoops, where is that? I can tick off that I've done my accounts receivable and my sales. Next item I'm going to look at is my inventory and this is a two step process so my inventory and my accounts payable work hand in hand. So inventory and we use these two together to work out purchases. 
So my opening balance and my inventory is 420. And my closing balance is 550. Uh, what increases my inventory is purchases, but we don't know that. But what decreases my inventory is my cost of sales. So my cost of sales is my 2250 2550 and that's my cost of sales. Uh, what have we got there? We've got 3100. And this gives me a purchases. Uh, what's that? Uh, 2680. Yep. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to do accounts payable as well. So my accounts payable. is 390, uh, oops, 390 is my opening balance which I'm getting from here and my closing balance is 310. Now that purchases figure is going to increase my um, accounts payable, so my purchases which I've just worked out is 2680 um, if I'm going to close my account now, uh, plus 269, all right, 80 is 3.070, and I'm going to deduct from that the 3.10, and that equals 2.760. I'll write that. And that's my cash figure. So I'm going to highlight that one because that's going to go into my cash flow statement as well. Okay, so I can tick off my accounts payable as being done and my cost of sales is being ticked off as well. Now I can tick off inventory because I've got that one as well. The next item I've got is prepaid insurance. I'll just systematically work through these ones. So I've got insurance. Do I have an insurance expense? I do have an insurance expense there, so that's good. Uh, so my prepaid insurance starts with a balance of 30. And I've got a closing here of 35. Now, what increases my prepaid insurance is obviously the cash I paid, but what decreases my prepaid insurance is my insurance expense, which we're ticking off as 80, which gives me uh, 115. So my cash position or cash paid is $85,000. And because it's a cash paid, I want to include that in my cash flow statement as well. So that takes care of all my current assets. Have I got any current liabilities? I do. I've got some accrued expenses. So my accrued expenses were on the liability side, my opening is 140 and my closing is 130. Now this one's easy enough. We're just looking for the movement and this becomes part of my operating expenses of 10. So I can tick off my... Yep? Well, if it's, a, if it's a, an asset, or if it's on that, so my normal balance for assets would be debit, so that's where the opening goes, yep. and my normal balance for my liabilities would be credit, so that's where my opening goes then.
Okay. Now, if you don't do it this way, that's okay. As long as you remember, it's an increase or a decrease. That's all. Um, okay. So my accrued expenses. Now I'm going to look at my operating expenses, which are these other expenses down here. So, uh, operating expense. So we have um, expenses for the period <coughs> of 766. Um, this operating expenditure here, it's a debit here, so it'll be uh, my accrued expense, which nets off at 10. 776. That so must make this side 776, and that must mean I paid cash for my operating expenses of 776. And I highlight that because that's going to go into my cash flow statement as well. Ticking off other expenses. I've ticked off my insurance. I've got interest and income tax to go. Have I got opening and closing for those? I do. I've got an interest payable. Okay, so let's do that one. Interest payable. 30, so my opening is 30, and my closing is 35. Now, what increases my interest payable is my um, expenses. So my interest expense came in at 110,000, is that right? Yep, 110,000, so it's going to increase my payables. That makes 140. This side's 140. So my pay, I paid for. I uh, should keep calling it cash. It's 105,000. So my cash paid for interest is 105,000. Is that it? No. Sorry, we've got income tax expense to go. 450. Okay, my income tax payable starts at 390. Uh, tax payable starts. My opening balance is 390, and my closing balance is uh, 450. Now what increases my tax payable is my tax expense and I can find that from here and there's my tax expense there so I can tick off that that's got them all 450 is uh, expense that makes 7, 840 840 here so that must mean my cash paid is 390 And that takes care of all my items. Now I can prepare my cash flow statement for the month uh, for the year end of 30th of June. So target time again. Operation limited. Cash flow statement. For year ending thirtieth of June two oh one nine. Cash flow from operating activities Alright, so my operating activities, cash from customers, now my cash from customers is the very first item that I had which was 5068. My payments to my suppliers is next.
and my payments to my suppliers was 2760 and I'm going to bracket that figure to indicate to me it's a cash outflow um, what's my next one my insurance paid insurance paid is 85 Uh, operating expenses paid uh, is seven seven six thousand interest paid is a hundred and five thousand and tax paid. Three hundred and ninety thousand. So now if I'm to calculate all of that five oh six eight less two seven six zero less eighty five less less one oh five 390 952 and that's my cash flow from operating activities